Lecture 7. The Wisdom of Spiritual Systems The Integration of Psychics and Spirit When we human beings analyze different wisdom systems, we tend to neglect the limitations of the default system in which we are conducting the comparison and criticism. When the subject of the discussion is religious wisdom, psychic or spiritual wisdom, many people habitually apply scientific thinking and logic to criticize those wisdoms. As repeatedly mentioned in the previous lectures, under the prevailing environment of empirical science, we human beings often make the mistakes of attempting to solve high-dimensional problems with low-dimensional methods. Let's now have a look at the psychology system. To date, the relatively authoritative method in this field is Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis. Why? Freud had used ample clinical psychoanalytic tests or statistics conducted in the three-dimensional world. Such three-dimensional knowledge is a strong support for his theory. What exactly is psychology? In my opinion, psychology is the study of the consciousness activities of a person. We have already shown that consciousness, in essence, is a kind of high-dimensional energy. There is no difference in nature between this kind of energy and the energy in the physical world. Indeed, the physical world itself is formed by these overlapping energies. However, when associating consciousness activities and the physical world, psychologists haven't been able to form a set of theories supported by modern scientific logic systems. They merely separated psychology from the modern scientific mass and logic system, but in my opinion, they can be linked up logically. The nature of all matter is the energy wave, which forms two different kinds of matter in the three-dimensional world. The first is mass, the objects which result from the overlapping of energy. The other is consciousness, or information, Thought included. The Yi Jing has 64 trigrams, which are formed by stacking the basic eight trigrams onto each other. The 64 trigrams represent the distribution of energy and the basic information of the distribution. The 64 trigrams are the fundamental genes of all things in the three dimensional world. The so called genes are are the spectrums which record the stacking of energies. When these 64 basic spectrums are stacked together, millions and millions of things are formed. Please note that all matter is included in these things. Matter, which is the information of the mass objects or things involved, are all part of the consciousness activities of human beings. In other words, consciousness activities and physical activities are all results of the stacking or overlapping of energy waves, and these are all connected in the three-dimensional world. At this stage, no research has covered the level of the interchanging relationship among these things. The change happens at the quantum state. Modern physics lab tests prove the link between the result and the consciousness of the experiment. This gives us a very important insight. Change in the physical world is associated with the consciousness of man. Change in a physical object is associated with our consciousness. Knowing this, when we re-examine this theory system, we can feel like we are enlightened. In other words, in a three-dimensional physical world, the energy waves form objects and the information about the objects. In a four-dimensional world, the energy waves still exist. 
yet the energy is of a higher dimension, and it is called the subconsciousness. Subconsciousness is the energy distributed underneath the surface. What is the relationship between the energy distribution of subconsciousness and our reality? From the logic system mentioned before, we understand the relationship is of a projection source in a higher dimension and the projected images in a lower dimension. Actually, psychology is a study of the interface relationship between the third and fourth dimensions. It does not analyze from the quantum perspective, nor from the mass perspective. It comes from the consciousness perspective. It analyzes the relationship between consciousness in the third dimension and consciousness in a higher dimension. Let's talk about psychoanalysis, a term which comes from the interpretation of dreams by Sigmund Freud. It is a study of the pre-consciousness. What is a dream? The nature of a dream is a high dimensional issue. For example, if we take a nap after lunch and we have a dream, we might feel the dream to be very long, but when we wake up, we may find that only five minutes have elapsed. A lot of people also have this experience. The contents of their dream do not follow a chronological order. The scenes in the dream are different from reality, and the measurements of time in different dreams are also different. Through contrasting different dreams, the movie Inception illustrates brilliantly that time is a variant element. Whenever time is a variant element, the fourth dimension appears, one dimension more than the third dimension. Dreams belong to the higher dimensions, minimally the fourth dimension. Some people have experience like this. When they go to a strange place, they feel the place to be very familiar. However, after they awake, they realize that they couldn't have been there before. Why is this? Actually, they might have been to this place before in their dreams. Because in the dream's fourth dimensional world, time is a variant element. Moreover, one can go to any point of time on the time axis, including the future. If you have been to a place in the future in your dream, and later you actually go to the place in the three-dimensional world, you found the familiarity, the at first mysterious familiarity sometimes referred to as déjà vu. The interpretation of a dream is achieved through analyzing its relation to what has happened in the three-dimensional world, to find out the internal reasons in the projection source, and then to provide guidance and adjustment, etc. Part of psychology deals with connection, which is cognitive psychology and it fits well with the system we are describing, in which the actual world we are seeing is formed by our cognition. When talking about the mathematics models of Yi Jing in the Taoist wisdom, I specifically talked about the importance of the third energy wave. This third energy wave is an energy wave which has been rendered or projected onto the hologram by an observer. This energy wave comes from us, the observer who carries a unique spectrum which is actually our connection. In other words, our connection, our understanding, determines what images are rendered and projected onto the external world. As we explore further in the study of psychology, we see that more and more psychological methods engage higher dimensional consciousness. Let's take hypnosis for example. This is a method to bring someone out of the restricted three-dimensional world and take him to an expanded three-dimensional space by maintaining the links between the images in both three-dimensional spaces. 
The ability of hypotherapist varies. Most don't have the ability to bring out the things that happened before this lifetime. Most can only trace back to some hidden things in present lifetime memory. But there are notable exceptions. Dr. Brian Wells is a famous doctor and also a hypotherapist in America. He has written four books on so-called past life regressions. The first book is called Many Lives, Many Masters. Catherine, Dr. Wells' patient, came to him to treat her various problems or phobias such as fear of darkness, water, being choked by food, and interacting and communicating with others. Initially, under Dr. Wells' stimulus treatment, when she was able to think of her past, there were no incidents that could plausibly account for the cause of her fear. However, Dr. Wells was adamant that in hypnosis treatment, one must be able to return to the point of time, in current or in past life, when such triggering events happened. By doing so, the patient would be able to resume recognition from that point of time and re-engage the event. As a result, the patient would be able to dissolve the mental entanglement and obstacle. After his initial setback with Catherine, Dr. Wells tried some deeper hypnosis with her. And she said something after the treatment which shocked the doctor. Catherine said, Her consciousness went back as far as the 1500s, in a place in France. Dr. Wells has not expected Catherine would be able to relieve what she had experienced in her past life. He had expected her to experience something in her current life. Hence, he continued to guide her to try and find out what had happened. In that lifetime, there was a flooding in the village Catherine lived in. She and her mother went both drowned. This is the reason Catherine is fearful of water now. After some struggling on the treatment chair, Catherine calmed down. This hypnosis treatment was a great turning point in Dr. Wells' practice. He later had many other findings, which will not be introduced here. Dr. Wells struggled too, as to whether to publish these findings of his treatments. He was an atheist, and he didn't believe in any religion nor in reincarnation. To believers in the logic system of Western medicine, all this sounds ridiculous. However, he totally believed in the theories of psychology he applied in his practice, so he eventually decided to publish the findings of his treatments. In further past life treatments, he uncovered many hidden guidance. For example, in one of her past lives, Catherine was in Russia and was in the form of a seven-year-old boy. His father was wrongly sentenced to death, and she couldn't stand the torture of such cruelty, and she died soon after. During a break in the treatment, Catherine's voice became very deep, like that of a male. The male's voice asked Dr. Wells, Do you know what I had learned from this incident? Dr. Wells was shocked, but the male said, in this lifetime he had came to learn that no one should be wronged. Dr. Wells later learned each of us is here to finish our homework for this lifetime. How could that be achieved? By choice. If one chose to be a poor person, or a rich person, or be a king, he needs to achieve his goal. To love, to accept, to forgive, to embrace all. We must learn from this invisible master, as in many lives, many masters. This master, as I put it, is the spirit in a higher dimension, a high ego in modern spiritual studies. In Chinese culture, they are referred to as the original spirit, 
or the spiritual consciousness. They represent the energy relationship of the projection source in the higher dimensions. It will establish connections under special circumstances with energy in the three-dimensional world. Hypnotherapy can lift a person from the three-dimensional world to the fourth-dimensional space, which is the higher projection source. When in this higher dimension, all three-dimensional worlds look equal. It's like if I stand in the center of a room, the four walls can be seen by me. If I were to put my focus on and be attached only to one wall, I would have less or no sense of consciousness of the other three walls. Hypnotherapy is a method for one to be able to see in different three-dimensional worlds the different projections of the same projection source, and then make changes. With this understanding, we do not need to rely on hypnosis in our self-cultivation. In other words, we don't need to know the relationship between our past life and our current life. We only need to go to the projection source to make all the changes, as all images in the three-dimensional world come from the fourth-dimensional space. By comparing the different images in different three-dimensional worlds, we will eventually come to face the relationship as reflected in the fourth-dimensional space, which is the source and the origin. Once the entanglement at the source had been dealt with, the problems in the lower dimensions could be easily transcended. This is the theory of hypnotherapy. In recent years, there is another popular stream of psychology treatment, family constellation. Two basic theories are being applied in this method. Universal holography and the adjustment of the four-dimensional projection source, that is, to changing the projection source to achieve different images in the projection. During family constellation therapy, a teacher guides a group of students in role playing. The students are to play the role of a family member and to adjust their energy to suit that role in the hope of achieving a correct understanding of the relationship among the members and to achieve a resolution. Why does role-playing by a couple of people have an effect on the real situations of a family? The family constellations method is in accordance with the law of universal holography. A random mass point in a universe contains all the information about the universe and the connections among all the information. We can extend this concept. Each person contains all the information about the universe and the connections among the infinite points in it. In other words, you and I have all the information and energy all the time and in all places. And my interpretation of the word perception actually means that some innate energy within our body becomes active and manifest under some specific instructions. During the family constellation role play, different students play different members of the family, the father, the mother, etc., and the teacher. The instructor, based on their feelings and senses, assigns the students to be at a certain locations. They are encouraged to have interactions and the instructor modifies the energy field through their interactions. Why could simply anyone be chosen to play the role of a father, a mother, etc.? Because any person has in them the holographic information of a father, a mother, in fact, of anyone. When we are in the right energy field and have totally let ourselves go, we can under a specific instruction, utilize the information within ourselves and render the energy of that information. 
there is one important precondition to this treatment. The students must obey the rules set by the teacher, the instructor. If a student opposes this process and is reluctant or rebellious toward it, the effect would be greatly discounted, even if he participated in the treatment, because this treatment requires a holographic approach. The requirement for the instructor is that he must have the higher dimensional vision. If not, things will be difficult. The person under treatment can be lifted to a dimension as high as that of the instructor and start to become energy entangled. If the instructor could not control the situation, it would be like he had unzipped a bag and could not zip it back closed. This could be dangerous. Family constellation treatment utilizes holographic information and introduces consciousness to the projection source. Each of the participants let go of their role in the three-dimensional world and enters the higher dimension of the projection source, in which the energies are changed, and then reprojected into the three-dimensional world. When this is achieved, the reality in the three-dimensional world changes too. This is the fundamental theory behind this treatment. However, such treatment, like hypnosis, can be very dangerous. Opening the source code and source programs of ourselves to an instructor or hypnotherapist makes us more vulnerable to both harmful and helpful instruction and treatment. In recent times, super psychology or spiritual depth psychology transcends the relationship between the third and fourth dimensions and enters another deeper sphere, super consciousness, which is related to awakening. The fundamental aim of traditional psychology is to solve problems. For super psychology, the aim is to awaken wisdom in a person. In recent years, many traditional practitioners have turned to super psychology. More and more attention has been paid to spiritual development, as human beings are now on the track of moving from the third dimension to the higher dimensions. Super psychology is very interesting. When modern scientists, grounded in three-dimensional logical thinking, expand their dimensional boundaries, they remain clinging to attachments. For example, a constellation in the universe, a status of a level of space, or the image of a grandmaster, etc. Such attachments more or less hinder the link between them and the ultimate complete wisdom. I once had a discussion with a person in charge of a super psychology program. He said in his programs and classes that he had always allowed the participants to experience their spiritual status. I said, spirituality is something of higher dimension and allowing people to experience the higher dimension status is dangerous. He then realized his results were in agreement with this caution. As it turned out, many participants felt happy during the programs and classes. But when the program was over, they felt exhausted, sick of society and needing to run away from reality. They became attached to the programs and classes and wanted to participate in programs or classes all the time. He then asked for my suggestion. I said, genuine spiritual classes should provide a guidance which aims at the highest dimension. Instead of merely experiencing and dwelling at a certain dimension which is not the highest dimension. A program should emphasize the power of the wow. The purpose of the great wow is aiming for the nth dimensional universe and approaches infinity. 
I'll be covering this topic in future lectures. Any super psychology system must have an ultimate backbone, which supports the system, and that is the through awakening of wisdom. This ultimate backbone is enlightenment. But as long as one has attachments, one is hindered from cultivating it. When we look at the Diamond Sutra, we read that Sariputra asked the Buddha a question. In what should a virtuous man or a virtuous woman abide in, and how should they subdue their minds? The accents of the question is on how to subdue the mind. Buddha Sayamuni replied, For a virtuous man or a virtuous woman who has already generated the mind of Anuttara Samya Sambuddhi, he should abide as such and should subjugate his mind as such. When one has generated a great vow to achieve the complete, unsurpassed, and perfect enlightenment, he should put his mind to the nth dimensional universe and approach his infinity, which is the ultimate aim of all spiritual cultivations. This should be the only direction. If one dwells in a certain level of dimension, he would be restricted and would hinder himself in his pursuit of full enlightenment. When different religions or spiritual systems describe different high dimensional spaces, they have different ways of describing, and their level of understanding is manifested in their descriptions. It's like when someone is cutting a full cake, thin slice or thick slice, vertical cuts or horizontal cuts. These are not important. The accents, the cake, is of importance. In Buddhism, there are many different levels of heaven. For example, the heaven of Mahabrahmana, Charya Srimsa, Sutti, Namarati, Parinamita Vasavatin, etc. In the Kriyan system, there are eight levels, which means eight energy levels. In the law of one, there are various levels, and they are described in densities. Let me use the law of one as an example and explain. In the law of one, a group of scientists tried to make contact with the higher dimensional extraterrestrial wisdoms. They didn't rely on any scientific methods. Instead, they used a medium who could connect with these higher dimensional beings. The medium would lie on the bed. On a bench close to the head, there would be a crystal ball and incense, etc. The scientists would ask questions and the medium would answer. The answers were all written down. They were very abstract and difficult to understand. The medium entered a higher dimension and described the life situations there. He tried to provide answers to the three-dimensional questions asked by the scientist in the three-dimensional world. And the answers given by the medium are very interesting. For example, the scientist asked, What form are you in? And where are you from? The medium answered, There are eight densities in the universe, and human beings are in the third density. The medium was in contact with the fifth or the sixth density. The scientist then asked if he had had any contact with humankind. He said yes, back in the times of the pyramids. The scientist then asked what he had done when they made that contact. The medium said they helped the people build the pyramid. As to how, he said, with the power of the mind. The scientist asked, if he was able to do that with the power of the mind, why didn't they build the pyramid in one piece, instead of stacking blocks and blocks of large stones? The reply was that, that would be unacceptable to human beings. 
the method must be one that could be accepted by human beings at that time. What was the purpose of building the pyramids? A pyramid is a collector of energy from the universe. Those who live in the pyramid could receive high-dimensional energy from the universe. Later, they stopped building pyramids because they found that human beings were very selfish. The medium said the pyramids were built to serve all people on earth, yet the Egyptians only used it for the pharaohs. This is one of the sections the scientists recorded. The scientists also asked, how long are human beings going to stay at the third density? The medium was very cautious and precise in his answer. He said, Human beings are supposed to be in the third density for 75,000 years, which is divided into three equal stages. At the conclusion of the first stage, no spirit was mature enough for them to harvest. At the conclusion of the second stage, some spirits were mature enough, yet they chose to stay on earth. They were those eminent monks, sages and saints who chose to stay to help advance the spiritual life of human beings. At the conclusion of the third stage, all human beings would experience a common lift. What stage are we in now? The medium said, we are at the end of the third stage. We have 30 years before the end of the stage. When the experiment was conducted, it was 1981. So 2011 and 2012 would be the turning point between the third density and the fourth density. At this time, the inner consciousness energy has turned from three-dimensional status to a higher dimensional one. Before that, we pay more attention to material needs. After this point, we attach more importance to spiritual and high-dimensional things. According to the Mayan calendar, the end of the world would come in 2012. Actually, that was not meant to be the end of the world. It was the progress of the human being's lift in the level of dimensions. It was the end of a three-dimensional cognition, and it was to be a transcendence. We are now in the time and space where higher dimensional energy is in dominance. This is a Dharma ending period for the third dimensional era. In the fourth dimensional space we have entered, human beings are gradually becoming self-enlightening. Therefore, we should all aim at entering the highest spiritual sphere, which is the nth dimension, and approaches infinity by self-cultivation. Some may ask, if all aims for and goes to the nth dimension, what will be left in the three-dimensional world? But the third dimension and the nth dimension are just descriptions. Dimensional spaces are not external worlds, the dimensions lie within. All the external matter we see is the projection of the inner mind. The high dimensional space is within. You can find it without. In the Heart Sutra, the eminent Bodhisattva's name is Guan Zizai. Guan means to reflect inwardly. To reflect that the presence of self-nature is great ease. Great East is the situation of the nth dimension and approaches infinity. Presence refers to the current energy status. It describes our lived inner consciousness, including beyond death. Such description of energies and the commonality of and the commonalities between such descriptions reflect that the essence of life is to be found in consciousness energy. And the purpose of life is to improve its level of freedom. Emptiness of a space doesn't mean empty of meaning or significance. Some say that the lower dimensions would disappear. There is no such issue. We, 
as human beings, are not connected too much with what's happening to ants. Whether they are fighting with each other, or whether their nest is empty, this is a description of the view from a higher dimensional space. It is like in the Hot Sutra, where we read, when Bodhisattva Avaloki Charara practices the profound paramita. What is paramita? It is the deep dhyana concentration, the entering deeply into the higher dimensional space. When the dimension is high enough, he looks back and perceives that even the five aggregates are empty of intrinsic existence. The lower dimension worlds, which are not solid and concrete, are void in nature, and they are intrinsically self-sufficient, and they cannot be attached. The ultimate point of the highest dimensional world is the nth dimension, and approaches infinity. I want to emphasize again, this is not the ultimate truth, and this is only one description. But we can rely on this description to help us understand all cultivation methods that are used.